Allison Graham once experienced what she calls the decade of hell. And from outlaw moment, turned things around to build a successful company, coaching with some of Canada's most influential corporations, and has published her third book, documenting her journey with a title that should send them off flying off the shelves. Mary, Allison Graham married my mom, birthed a dog. How to be resilient when life sucks. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you for having me. Okay, right off the bat, the title. Okay, the title. Well, it really started as a joke in, I guess, about 2010. At that point, I'd gone through five surgeries, uh, two of which had gone wrong. Right. And the doctors talked to me about redefining my goals. At that time, I was a business owner, still am, very successful company, and they wanted me to consider going on disability. And I said, no. <laughs> so how can I go into a resourceful mode and part of it was bringing my mom to town. Uh, she's a saint. She gave up her life. One of the stars of the book. As she really is and would drive me. So I'd go and I'd speak for, you know, a big bank or a, a keynote or a full day workshop. And she and my dog Winston would be outside waiting for me. Yes. I'd wait from the window <laughs> and then they'd take me home and then I'd take two, three days to recover from because it would intensify the pain. Yeah, we've got to give Winston big credit too. Oh my gosh. And it, the story in the book, I don't know if you read it, when I found Winston and he just, you know, sometimes they say your dog finds you. Yes. And meant to be. It was meant to be. But he was so therapeutic. Oh, and I think, because this really happened through my 30s yeah. and in many ways he, he fulfilled that maternal instinct. Yeah. that I needed. So that's the birth of the dog. And, and those who have fur so babies those, will those, understand. <laughs> <laughs> those are crucial elements. But um, through this 10 years of hell, uh, you learned to become a resiliency ninja. Yeah. yeah. You gotta do that to go with it. <laughs> that's a good move. I like it. The <laughs> movie will come after the book. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. I did. And it was because I, I believe that you have a choice. So bad things are going to happen. We're going to have stress. We're going to have obstacles. We're going to have adversity. They're all different. And I explained that in the book. But it's how you respond to it. It's easy to become a victim well, or feel I, like one. That's right. And I think, you know, the, the conversation we're having in our own minds. Mm -hmm. Like, and think like one. Right. Yeah. And there, are, to become a resiliency ninja, you need to be self-aware. You need to hone your strength and become very resourceful. So I talk about that. Yeah, you come up with an action plan. That's right. Yeah, so you have to identify what that stress is. Yes, and really look at it because adversity is when it's an outside force that's mm -hmm. out of your control and really has the power to completely shift how your life operates. And I think stress is very different. Stress is often internally driven mm -hmm. because we think we can do more than we can in a little bit of time, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. So I give different strategies on how to deal with and, and bounce back in those tough times. Yeah, and uh, dealing with the adversity that we can't change, it's right. there. And finding the acceptance. One of the most popular chapters in the book is the one around forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It's called You Can't Fake Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And I think that until I was able to forgive the surgeon who caused the initial pain, until I was able to forgive the people who accidentally you know, were in the wrong place at the wrong time and caused me eight various injuries, uh, you know, there were people who died and caused a lot of grief. And until you can forgive that, I don't think you can move forward after adversity. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, in this formula, like just uh, one of the takeaways too is just how we become ourself, our worst enemies. Uh, through the battle. The and internal so, messenger. The internal messenger of BS. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And it's so self-defeating. It is. And yet we're so hard on ourselves. And there were days when I was in so much pain, I couldn't turn off the light switch. And so that was where mom really came into helping my life. You can see the temptation of wanting to retreat. And Absolutely. Just... And But sometimes I had to retreat. Uh -huh. There was no, there was no question. And I those couldn't. days are okay. They are, but it's not okay if you're sitting there going, oh, I'm so lazy, I'm, you yeah. know, I should be out working, I have clients I could call, I could sell more, like all of those internal, and then that just created this extra internal yep. fight. Yep. And as a resiliency ninja, you kind of got to yeah. cut that out. I love that you quote Winston Churchill too. You know, <laughs> if you're going through hell, keep, keep on going. going. All <laughs> That's right. right, we got to keep on going too, but let's sell some books. Alison Absolutely. Graham, married my mom, birthed a dog, and uh, empowering, inspiring, and uh, so glad to have you here on Morning Live. Thanks We're back for having after me. This.